Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare medieval mushrooms and chestnuts from Anonymous Toscano's cookbook, written in the 14th century. We start with the ingredients. We need the chestnuts, mushrooms, olive oil, white wine vinegar, onion, and the spices, black pepper, cloves, and nutmeg. We roast the chestnuts under the embers. The author does not specify how to cook the chestnuts, just to add them to the mushrooms and then cook them together. The methods used in the Middle Ages are three. Roasting on the fire, cooking under the ash and boiling them. We are cooking them just at the time necessary to remove the shells. Chestnuts have been a popular food in Italy since ancient Rome, especially among the people living in the mountains. We used the chestnut flour as a substitute for wheat. Pliny describes the main varieties, writing that they are used for both people and animals. Despite being considered hard to digest and heavy by medieval physicians, as Michele Savonarola or Ugo Benzi, who consider them suitable just for mountaineers and robust people, chestnuts appear in many high-end recipes to stuff pies and tortelli, make fritters and other dishes, such as the one we are making today. If you want to know more about chestnuts in historical cooking and dietetics, check out our Patreon page, in which you find articles and translations of ancient and medieval sources. Meanwhile, we grind the spices in the mortar and mince half an onion. The author doesn't specify which spices to use for this recipe. In addition to the ones we chose, you may use ginger, grains of paradise, cinnamon, cardamom or others. We chose the lean version of this recipe, but to prepare the fat version, use lardo instead of olive oil. You may serve this dish with mustard made with cooked mustard and pork cooked as you want, as the author writes. The recipe for mustard is explained below in the text of Anonimo Toscano. Mince the radish and cook it with anise and fennel seeds in grape mustard, cooking until it reduces by half. Then mix this liquid with mustard made with strong vinegar and anise and fennel seeds. Then we simmer the mushrooms. The author recommends using dry mushrooms, but since we found in the chestnut groves some good boletti, we use them for this recipe. We followed the typical medieval method for mushrooms, also used by Anonimo Toscano in the previous two recipes. We pre-cooked the mushrooms in water before cooking them with the other ingredients. If you want instead to follow the original recipe, steep dried mushrooms in water overnight and mince them finely with the onion without pre-cooking them. Mushrooms indeed are considered cool and very hard to digest by the medieval physicians, and this method helps to make them more suitable for digestion. For more information about medieval dietetics, check out our new book, The Observazione Ciborum, a source halfway between a cookbook and a treatise, written as a letter by the physician Antimus to the king of the Franks, Theuderic. In the book you will find not only the translation of the text, but also an introduction and a glossary of the peculiar Latin used by this Byzantine author. The book is available for pre-order and will be out on 21 November in ebook and print editions. We pour the olive oil in a pan, saute the onion, then add the sliced mushrooms and cook for a couple of minutes. On Amazon you also find our other two books, Registro in Cucuine a Medieval Cookbook and Ancient Roman Cooking. To support our work, you can also buy us a beer 
or purchase our merchandise. You find all the links in the description below. Then we add a little water, a pinch of salt and vinegar. When it boils again, we add the precooked and peeled chestnuts and the spices. We simmer until the chestnuts are cooked through. This dish turned out intensely fragrant and savory. Chestnuts and mushrooms are quite heavy but delicious together. The sweetness of chestnuts is perfect with the flavor of mushrooms that recalls moss and woods, making a great pairing for these cool days of autumn. We paired this dish with roast pork and medieval vermicelli. You find the links to the videos in the description below. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you.